Welcome back to this course on Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and today's lecture is on macro trends in Civil Wars. And what I'm going to do in this lecture is show you a single graph. There it is. So what we have on this graph is the number of ongoing wars, ongoing civil wars over time from the 1945 to 2000 period. And we see on the y-axis we have a range from zero civil wars all the way up to 50 civil wars. And what I'd like you to do now is to go ahead and pause and think about what observations you can make about this graph. And also think about what might be causing those observations that you see. So if you'd like, go ahead and pause now, and in the comments section below this video, go ahead and write down your observations and speculate on what might be causing them. And if you've done that, I'm ready to start talking about three important observations. But before we get to that, a quick note here. The Civil War data start in 1945. You might be wondering why that's the case. Well, 1945 is obviously the end of World War II, and before the end of World War II is when you still had a colonial period going on in the world. So if we look at data just following 1945, we're ignoring the era of the colonial system, and we're looking at the post-colonial system, also the post-World War II world. So that's why we're looking at 1945 onward. All right, so what about those observations? Well, the first observation, and probably the most obvious thing going on in this graph, is that the number of wars was increasing from 1945 to 1990. You can see that we start out at about, what, three wars going on in 1945, and we peak at about 1990 at 30, and then immediately following 1990, we get all the way up to about 45. So there's definitely an increasing number of wars going on from 1945 to 1990. Now, your first inclination for why that's the case is that there are simply more wars starting over that time. And actually, that's not the case. The reason that the number of ongoing wars increases over time is that the length of civil wars is increasing over time. So if we look at 1945, we're starting at only about a year of ongoing wartime. Right? So looking at the bottom left corner at 1945, the average length of a war that's ongoing was very small, about a year. But by the time we get all the way to 1990, we're looking at a 15-year average of ongoing civil wars. Think about how long that war is. That's an extremely long war. The United States, as I filmed this, has been in Afghanistan from 2001 to 2014. That's the United States' longest war, and that's only 13 years. And this is saying that the average, the average length of an ongoing war got all the way up to 15 years in 1990. So that's pretty shocking. And if we look at just the number of new wars that go on from year to year, we can see that the number of new civil wars is not causing that increase in the number of ongoing wars. There really isn't that much of a trend over time, with one exception that I'll get to in a moment. We see here that the number of wars that start every year remains relatively constant throughout the period. The second observation that you might notice here is that the number of ongoing wars spikes during the fall of the Soviet Union. So if you look at 1990, we go from about, what, 32 ongoing wars, and suddenly we jump up to 44, 45. So as the Soviet Union crumbles, the number of civil wars increases. And if you think about why that might be the case, well, here's an exhaustive list of European civil wars from 1945 to 1990. There weren't any. But as the Soviet Union crumbles, and counting all the Soviet successor states as part of Europe for the sake of this exercise. The number of European civil wars from 1991 to 1994 goes to Moldova, Tajikistan, Bosnia, Croatia, Russia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Yugoslavia. So whereas there weren't any European civil wars in that long period from 1945 to 1990, the Cold War era, suddenly there were a lot of civil wars going on in Europe. And the last thing worth noticing here is that the number of ongoing wars declines immediately thereafter. So one of the reasons that you might think that be, might be the case is because those wars that were going on at the beginning of the Soviet Union, uh, Soviet Union's demise quickly ended, and the spike that occurred was because the Soviet Union crumbled, and so there weren't a bunch of other wars starting up as a result of that. You just saw a quick little blip on the radar in 1990 where there are a bunch of extra wars going on, but that quickly dies off, uh, dies off thereafter. In any case, if we look at that graph, the graph asks, or at least brings up, a bunch of interesting questions, and I have three of them here. So the first question is, how did superpower competition affect the occurrence and duration of civil war? So as the United States and the Soviet Union were battling, out, battling it out from 1945 to 1990 during the Cold War era, how did that affect the occurrence of civil war, and how did it affect the timing of civil war, and how did it affect how long civil wars lasted? Second, why did Eastern Europe become a mess in 1991? 
So when the Soviet Union crumbles, what causes all these extra wars to start? Just because a state falls, a big state like the Soviet Union falls, doesn't necessarily mean that there had to be a whole bunch of extra wars started as a result of that. Why wasn't that more peaceful? And then lastly, how have things changed in the American era? So after the Soviet Union crumbles, the United States is left as the only superpower in the world. And that's substantively different than in a world where the United States is competing with the Soviet Union. So how have things changed in the American era following the Soviet Union's demise in the early 90s? These are questions that we're going to be talking about, or talk, answering, I guess I should say, in this course. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and next time we will look at a preview of what we'll be covering, an overview, if you will, of the course. So I will see you then. Take care.